I hope you're all doing well. I'm doing a psychic session for a client. I'm gonna go ahead and read the goals here and get started. Okay. Hi, Abby. Can you please help me connect to my intuition, higher guidance? I'd like to be able to fully trust myself and the universe. When I follow my heart, but my mind gets scared, I feel stuck in between the two and pulled apart, as both parts seem equally strong and stubborn. Mm. I feel my heart and my mind need to be connected to work together as one, which also seems the way to unlock my intuition. You're totally on to something here. <laughs> So you say, I'd like to share this session and the healing. I'm probably not the only one feeling this way. Without watching your sessions on YouTube and resonating with your love and wisdom, I probably would have never gotten the idea to give this a try. So thank you to you and the folks who have shared. <sighs> thank you very much, Christine. I. I really appreciate everything that you're sharing here with me and you're totally on the right track with this. I'm excited to do your session. I'm excited to share it. And a lot of people are going to gain so much from this. <laughs> okay. Okay, all right, I'm gonna get started now. Hmm. Okay. Right now, it's kind of like I'm trying to move through a wall. It's really gorgeous looking. There's a lot of emerald color in it, but there's also kind of like a copper. Um, it's like a flat rock, but it's dazzling to me. Um, it's almost like a geode that's been scraped across and you can see all the individual crystals, but they're kind of more of a, I don't know, orangish uh, color. There's some reds to it, browns, copper colors to it. This is a wall that I'm walking into and then there's sort of a cone shape and it's got emerald um, in it and I'm kind of going into this cone as like a tunnel and um, so it seems like I could hit a tiny pinpoint or it's just a very long tunnel and I'm trying to see to the end of it and I just simply can't. It just looks like it's going to a small pinpoint and a long, long ways away. It's like I'm going into a unicorn horn. This has a lot to do with your third eye and crown chakra. It's really interesting how flat, energetically flat it all feels. It's trying very hard to grow and expand, but it's, it's uh, too compacted. It's too much pressure upon pressure upon pressure upon pressure. It's like compacting it down. <sighs> Even as I'm moving through it, I feel um, tight and tense. I'm going to show you how to just simply close your eyes. It almost gives you an edge. Because when you work with your eyes, you're going to want to try to see. And when you try to see things, you're going to want to try to decide what it is that you're looking at. Um, so it can be a distraction. And sometimes seeing nothing at all will give you access to more information than what the gift of seeing actually provides you. <laughs> it can give you a lot of distractions. So what I'm doing is I'm just closing your eyes. You're literally your eyes. It's like a third eye and crown chakra eyes. I'm just closing your eyes because they're, they're too, that it's, I'm not sure how they did it or how you manifested it, but you built up so much information compacted down, 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 and pressure, pressure, pressure. Um, so it's just like so much build up here. So we're just gonna close the eyes and we're just gonna be, um, we're gonna rise above what all this is about. Because all it is is just going to give us more to try to look at and decide about and all that. So 
I'm just closing the eyes. Okay, this is where the concept of trust comes in because you feel like you're dangling. I'm dangling, I'm dangling here. Oh God, <laughs> I can't see, I can't see. It's like, it's fine, we're working with trust. When you work with trust, well, what do you need to look at exactly? What do you need to see? Nothing, we're working with trust. You need to see nothing. <laughs> it's like, it's amazing, it's just like, what? Oh my god. What? I never thought of it like that. <laughs> it's, it's hilarious and adorable. And it's like, you're, you're figuring it out so fast. It's really cute. <laughs> you get it. Instantaneous epiphany. Like, that is trust, isn't it? It is totally trust. This is going to help us. It's like we're bridging a weird gap that we did. I mean, it's like you built all this up to create the bridge, but the real bridge is when you break it all down and you're standing in the, the I don't know because I can't see. And that is the bridge of trust. <laughs> so we're actually, you're actually raising your vibration into the unknown realm of trust um, where everything that you built and created before wasn't doing you any good needed to be completely broken down. So you're going to feel, I mean, you don't necessarily feel like a fish out of water, but I could imagine we're rearranging your energy scope of things. So it could feel that way, but let's just see what happens next. Oh, you long to see so, so bad. Like, oh, I, but I just really, I, I long to see, I long to see. And it kind of reminds me of just like, every human longs to see, you know, like we all want to see what's going on on the other side of the veil. Like who doesn't want that? You know, that's the vibe. And sometimes to actually start to see, you have to choose to see nothing. Hmm. This is very, very amazing. Because you're finally opening your inner eye for the first time. You thought you were using it, you weren't. You're basically just looking at a wall. And there's a massive, massive uh, energy being here. Huge, 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 massive energy being. And he's basically made out of the shadow. And you're finally able to see who this is. He is so interesting. He works with perspective. I see a candle light and the light is what creates the shadow, which gives you access to who he is. So he can't exist without light. The shadow cannot exist without the light. When there's no light, there's no shadow. So the light gives us access to the shadow. And he shows me he's really big, but he's also really small. There's a male M energy that he's, he's expressing a lot of male energy. He shows me he's also a pathway. And I can walk through him and walk the path of the shadow. That's how it's going to feel when you have to work with trust. Because you don't really know for sure. I mean, he calls himself walking the pathway of the shadow man. He's almost like he's trying to sound creepy. But he really isn't at all. He's uh, trying to... He's He represents perspective. Perspective that's going to derail the human mind, freak you out, and shut the door, right? But no, you have to work with trust. How do you build trust? You're going to have to put yourself out there to new experiences to understand what this is all about. I actually, there's literally nothing scary about this being. In fact, he's like a really wise guide. 
but he could be intimidating because he has to teach you. So the human mind, which is what we're we're wanting to overcome the ego. The ego is full of fear. It just it's it needs security all the time. So it can't tell is that is this okay? Can I trust this? Is this a manipulation? Is this good? Is this bad? So when you try to look at things like oh well that's a shadow. Oh that's bad. No, because the energy world, it's not about what things look like. It's about the depths of what it is you're interacting with. This appearance is so ridiculously deep and so ridiculously wise that it's feeling with your heart that will help you to determine that. Not seeing with your eyes, feeling with your heart will help you determine that. Energy can't lie because it is exactly as it is. So if the energy is a manipulation, it will feel like it isn't balanced. It will feel like it isn't telling me the whole truth. It will feel like it is only a part of a bigger picture. It will feel that way. Because your heart will help you to discern these things. Your eyes won't. Your heart will. So you're going to have to start learning how to listen to your heart and feel things out. Ask questions. Wow, you're kind of creepy. You're kind of weird. What's your what are you about? Well, I'm the tunnel of love. Well, I'm the shadow man. Well, I'm okay. Your tunnel of love? What do you mean by that? You're a shadow man? Is that what you call yourself? Is that some kind of joke? Like you can ask questions. You can talk to them, you know. This feels better. It feels a lot better, but your heart is fluttering and you're a bit, it, it's like there's still, you're, you're absolutely spot on, by the way. You're really spot on with what you have in your energy balance. You got it. You got it right. Um, like it's exactly as I experience it myself. And so there is um, a relationship going on here between your third eye and your heart. And you're kind of, um, I'm just going to say that. And just you're on a right on about that. I'm gonna I just want to see what the next thing is here, okay? My heart feels fluttery. It feel it feels intimidated, which I don't usually feel that in the heart like this, okay? Right now I'm just working through it. Because it's conflicted by the eye, the third eye, the mind, the ego. Crown chakra, no. It's just third eye ego. <sighs> okay, I'm entering into a new experience, new information. I feel like I am suffocated. Um, because the walls are too dense and thick and I'm being squished inside and I'm not able to breathe and I'm getting, um, it's like I'm swallowing my own tongue into my throat. And there's too much pressure on me. This is again, this is a very unusual imbal imbalance between your third eye and your heart chakra. <clears throat> and I can see that there's a desire to see what's going on here. But I tell you to close your eyes to truly see. And then you'll feel inside your heart the truth. Because there's nothing that is putting pressure on you except you are putting pressure upon yourself. And what part of you is doing it? It's your third eye. It's the need to see. See in order to interpret. Seeing creates safety, security. That it won't help you to see the truth. It's the wrong bridge. This is extremely exhausting. I remind you, we don't have to go down the, the path of Pandora's box today here. All we're going to do is just simply introduce these new concepts to your energy field and help it to um, rearrange its, its relationship with the next step. 
and this process of working with trust. So don't feel like we're like going to the advanced levels here. Let's just stay in the baby pond, you know, the baby pool for a little bit longer. Um, don't have to like understand the shadow man. It's just simply helping you to understand what is, um, what is beyond all of this when it comes to trust and true development and working with your heart. Still struggling with this, but we're, we're working our way through it. Um, I, it just feels like your heart is underwater now and it's, it's um, having a hard time breathing. And it's almost like it, this evil ego is turning into this man that's like drowning your heart and telling your heart, you will pay. You are going, you will not uh, override me. You will not, you will do what I say. And so I ask your heart, um, it's like your heart is the spirit, your ego is the human. So why is the human more powerful than the spirit? So you're letting the, the human insecurities um, strangle and suffocate out the infinite soul. So we got it backward here. <laughs> we need the infinite soul then to be the light um, that guides the man, guides the human, um, guides the ego um, down the path of the unknown. Otherwise, you're going to remain in the in the 3D classroom, which you're trying to rise beyond that, and you have to take the unknown path in order to do that, which means to truly see, you must close your eyes. <laughs> that feels better. That feels a lot better. Still quite a lot of work to do here between your third eye and heart relationship. But it, again, it's moving the third eye, the, the ego part of your third eye, okay? It's kind of moving it to behind the heart. Still not a healthy balance. There's still a lot of like kind of pressure on the heart. There's some kind of slug, um, energetic slug that is also kind of attached to the back side of your heart. So I'm looking at this next. Well, your ego is creating a lot of illusions here. A lot of illusions. Because it doesn't, it, it again does not want to accept that it is basically, in, it's a finite. It, it, the ego will say, I am all. But the ego is the part of the finite human construct. The heart is truly all. But the heart doesn't need ego. Um, it doesn't need to prove itself. It doesn't need to be the best or better than. See me. See how great I am. The heart is just pure and whole. Um, it doesn't. It's simple then in its own right. And the ego is. Does, it feels threatened by that. The ego will do whatever it takes to put heart in its place because the ego doesn't want to die. <laughs> but the more you tune into your heart, the the ego must transform. It must transform, and right now it is fighting back against transformation. It doesn't like this at all. This, I, I can see this being pretty complicated here. I'm going to tell you what I see. The ego has become a military man and has duplicated itself like thousands and thousands of times. Um, and it's wanting to hurt you really badly for wanting to then become enlightened, basically. Wanting to team up with your heart is wanting to basically torture you for that. You haven't figured out your own personal power yet either. Let's stay in the, the kitty pond, you know. Let's just stay in the the baby pool here with this. We, we need to take some smaller steps. Because when your ego is this vulnerable to enlightenment, um, it can become out of control, you know. So... We're going to take baby steps as to not completely derail the process of, of what is like awakening. 
because the awakening is basically a de an ego death and some ego deaths um are ridiculously hard to move through i had to go through my own ego death and it was freaking hard as uh, it was so ridiculously hard to go through um and i see that here you're on the edge of, of an ego death and so you're actually ready to rise beyond right do that you're ready to do that but um we can take small steps with this process so it's not overwhelming to your human life that way it doesn't just like it doesn't it's not like you're at war with yourself and it just it can be overwhelming so we're just going to do baby steps so right now i'm just slowing all the energy down Okay, your ego is still really threatened, but slowing the energy down, I'm telling ego that this doesn't have to be a nightmare. There doesn't have to be a war or a battle. This isn't one, the heart wins, you lose, you die. It's not that, it's actually transformation. You're not going to die, you are simply going to transform. Uh, all the your soul's been through a lot so there's a lot of like um all the pain of it's like this again is part of ego death because there's a lot of um basically soul fragments and memories of suffering um where you you had to face the ego of others where you were more enlightened than them, you were punished for it. Like so, all these unresolved, fragmented parts of your soul. And there's the Earth lives, there's other life, there's lives from all over the universe, space, and time. Okay, and so it's sort of coming out of the woodwork here, um, the lashing, the 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 hardship. Like um, again, trying to to put you, trying to put you back into your place, so into the human, the three D, so that you don't. Um, it's saying that you will suffer if you open up your heart. It's basically saying that. And it's unleashing all the painful memories of the past. And I don't even want to define it as the past. It's just timelines of your soul. Timelines that are past, present, and future that are cycles and cycles and cycles and cycles and cycles of past, present, and future with who knows how many fragmented aspects of yourself that went through extreme hardship. All this is being amplified in a ridiculously loud way. This is all part of ego death. <sighs> so I'm going to ask your heart, how does it feel? Like, how does everything feel so far? I see these military men kind of turning into ash and blowing away, but the ash doesn't exactly leave. It's just circulating right now. Again, we're going to have to take this super slow because this is like... <sighs> this can be a peaceful process. It doesn't have to be overwhelming. So I just, again, I'm asked to just have you close your eyes and don't worry about, it. it's just, it's all intimidation. So we're just closing our eyes in order to truly see from the heart, truly see you see from your heart, not from your head. That feels better. That feels like uh, we've leveled up. All that that was about, we've already risen above all that stuff. What is the next thing here? There's a lot of pressure here in the third eye, but it's not, um, 
It's not fighting right now. It's just like um, quiet here. And I feel there's a more room given to your heart. And there's more room, more breathability. The breakdown of what that structure was before. That wasn't the right path. That wasn't the real the bridge to true sight. It was it, the bridge to true sight, and is stepping into the the unknown, which is trust. And to truly see, you have to close your eyes to be guided. To be guided, that's how you work with your senses that are outside of the human senses. Okay, what is the next thing for Christine? What is the next thing? <sighs> oh man, you're going to see you're going to see a lot in your life. You're going to see truly see a lot. You're not going to superficially see a lot. You're going to truly deeply see a lot in your life. I'm being shown the candle that creates the shadow and how the dark and the light work together. This is important. And it creates love. It creates relationship. It creates balance. And it's like the light without the dark would be like, um, you know, a husband without a wife kind of thing. Like, um, it's like the balance of creation itself it's like the breath of life and the last breath of life like the first and the last breath of life um, it's, it's so sacred it's so holy it's so pure so true you seem to be on a quest um, for deep wisdom and understanding about this relationship between the dark and the light and the these two as lovers not at a, a war or battle with one another, but as truly connected deeply in love with one another. One cannot exist without the other kind of thing. They're the perfect mirror for each other. This is really healing for your heart and your ego as well. Like, it's like, it's, it's helping them both to see the value in one another. Not one dies, the other grows taller or something. It's like they both matter. So the concept of ego death is ego. You, you raise your vibration and you become expanded in your awareness. And some people get hit hard with it. And some people don't at all. And it's, it's so inside yourself we're creating this memory this understanding about the connection and the value so i have gone through an ego death but i still have an ego <laughs> because being human is having ego it's part of my ability to discern um my life my path to get lost and confused um to grow <laughs> basically to know everything is not necessarily to grow to grow is to not know everything and to struggle with that and to feel separated and to feel all these things that ego um, can provide us with. <laughs> so in becoming more enlightened and more awakened and deeply and being introduced to deep concepts, not because you read it, but because you became it, you became the truth of it. It became felt in such a deep way it could, could not be denied and it could even derail you. Truth can. Truth that you could read now that becomes a part of you can derail you for months even. That's also part of an ego death experience. So it can happen multiple, 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 multiple times in your life. Um, and that's normal. That's healthy. Um, that's becoming expanded yourself.
but you you'll still be human you know you still have an ego and you still have that even people who are egoless still work with the ego it's part of us as human beings to decide what is right and wrong because we live in a world of duality which is is part of our reality of right and wrong black and white good and bad i like that i don't like this you know so it's just part of you know i i you know i grew up i didn't like on onions for the longest time and then I got older and onions weren't that bad, okay? So <laughs> so we like some things, we don't like other things. It's just part of being human. We grow up and then we change our minds. So it's part, it's always gonna be there. It's We're gonna always have kind of a relationship with our ego, it's just part of being human. That's part of growing. This is helping to really neutralize what that was ego was really sensitive and under attack and um, is a lot more soothed and understanding the process. Um, it feels so much better and it feels like a much more supportive relationship between ego and heart, third eye and heart. I still feel like there's more we can do here with this. Um, this is an incredible start. It's a very incredible start. Let's look at your crown chakra here real quick. Crown chakra is a bit confused as to its purpose. What is it for? <laughs> That's so cute. <laughs> oh, it's so cute. It's like the crown chakra doesn't even know itself. I just say you are wise. You are a doorway of wisdom. Your wisdom heals all the other chakras with enlightenment and love and you basically channel this pure wisdom from heaven. That means that you're a star from heaven, crown chakra. You are a beautiful, bright, shining star from heaven and your heavenly light is what enlightens the other chakras, it nurtures and heals them with the food of wisdom. And wisdom comes from light, it's enlightenment, it is food, it is love. Mm. Ego is wanting to contaminate the crown because it's too bright. I know, I understand now why your crown was kind of dimmed out and confused. Maybe because, again, you're up against ego and it's trying to sabotage your enlightenment process. <laughs> um, it's okay. See, even me, I have to use my ego to tell you about your ego. <laughs> I have to use my ego to explain everything that I'm seeing and experiencing in your energy field. Like, whoa, that's way out there. Oh my god, that's so cute. That's my ego defining your energy field, okay? <laughs> so, there you go. All right. All right, I, I, I'm just gonna circulate the energy here in your third eye and your ego, specifically your ego. Your third eye is super great. Um, it, 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 there is, I wanna clarify so that this is understood here because um, seeing from your heart, you, you're gonna be seeing from all your chakras. Like your psychic senses are sen tapping into the gifts of all your chakras. So it's not just about the third eye, it's about all your chakras, right? But sometimes we get kind of obsessed with seeing the spirit realm. Um, so to truly see, we have to overcome the obsession to see. Um, and then once we're desensitized and we don't have an obsession to see, um, now we can truly see. Um, the third eye is going to work with your heart. It's going to work with you, all your your emotions. It's going to work with all your other chakras. Just like your heart's going to work with your third eye. They're going to always work together. Your root is going to work with all your chakras because they're always working together. But when we get out of balance, you'll have relate weird relationships between chakras and some will be, you know, that's normal. That's part of growing, you know. Um, but when they're all circulating and they have a happy family relationship with one another, that's when we're like, wow, you're really in good balance. So here we have a third eye crown chakra relationship where the third eye is kind of 
<clears throat> which the ego human side of your third eye is kind of trying to put a damper on the growth um, of your enlightenment and it's, it's it's an awakening human awakening kind of ascension process so it's just dish, it's just kind of um, shrouding the crown from really understanding itself and ego and trust this is such a good this is so good that we're working on this so I'm just still circulating this and I'm telling you it's okay it's totally okay I want you to see the light shining bright from the crown and experience how beautiful that is and to feel so proud of crown for being exactly as crown is and being thankful and grateful for that because you ego becomes stronger when all these other chakras are bright and strong within themselves. You become stronger through them. That's how we work together. No threat here. There's nobody threatening you. What I'm going to do, I'm, I'm so glad we have a follow-up session here because I, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put this, this ego is a bit of a worm, so I'm just going to put this in a box, okay? A time room. Because I don't want, I just want your, after the session, I want you to be circulating, processing really bright, positive energy without anything getting attacked. Um, so I'm just putting your ego into kind of like an energy space, an energy box where it can heal and nurture with diff with angelic energies are going to be supportive of your ego. We're just going to baby step this thing. Ego is in a box. Ego looks like a worm, okay? And the worm is pissed. Worm is like, like really, really controlling. So I'm just putting this worm into a time room and I'm asking that Archangel Michael and Archangel Metatron, Archangel Raphael come to support this process. It's a lot of crying, a lot of emotion related to it, a lot of exhaustion, a lot of anger. You're just circulating it in this worm. You're not. You're beautiful within within your own right. Like this is not truly a worm. It's like it is right now, but deep down inside, it is light itself. It's just not self-realized yet. It needs to heal and process in its own little space. So let's let that worm spend time with um, Archangel of Love and support. We'll put some Jesus energy in here too, because Jesus is so patient, unconditionally loving, no judgment at all. Pure love there for ego. Nothing but support. <sighs> okay. And I'm actually going to put like an energetic shield around you, okay? Um, just to continue to generate light and balance and healthy flow. Okay, that's <laughs> what I have to share. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much for this experience. So I'm not sure if you're going to... I mean, you may really feel this, um, this session. So just, you know, but it, like I really feel like you're going to feel this. Um, so just take it easy. If you feel emotional, it's, it's, it's the processing. It's the digesting of a lot of energetic shift and change. It's the healing of your ego. It's it's because your ego is in a special space. That doesn't mean you're not still going to be processing the healing that's taking place. I just don't want ego to be completely. I don't need you to have conflict as you're growing and healing and expanding because that can happen. Okay, so ego's in a safe space. You're in a protected energy bubble. Um, so there's no that. Just let this process. Okay, and just let this process and just just let it flow okay just let it flow hmm. i can't wait for the next session can't wait to see how your energy field looks differently and continue to work on 
um, this this relationship between your heart and your ego you're kind of you're going through on a human awakening human ascension like you're um this is a big process okay this is a really big process and it comes with a lot of new experiences and relationships with the spirit realm um and it can be it can be overwhelming but i don't that's why we're going to baby step this but i feel like your other chakras need support too so let's just i, I can't wait to see what your energy field looks like in, in the next session so we'll just, just well this is it we're going to work with this just let this process let this do its thing um rest drink water if you feel more emotional than usual just cry okay it's a part of the healing process the transformation process um feel bright and excited because we're gonna continue to work on this and it's only gonna get more interesting okay <laughs> all right christine thank you so much for this thank you very much thank you for sharing um, and for those of you watching, if any of you are interested in exploring a psychic session with me, please visit me at my website at abbynormalswisdomquest.com. I have two other YouTube channels. One is Abby Normal. The other is Zodiac Energy Readings. And you can also visit me on Patreon at patreon.com slash abbynormalswisdomquest. All right. Thank you all so much again for watching and have a great rest of your day.